What's up guys, it is Brandon from the Two Piece Mandem and welcome to the Hungary vs England preview. Now before I even get into this video, make sure you leave a like and don't forget to click the subscribe button as well because I'm looking at these statistics and half of you aren't even subscribed so make sure you click that subscribe button and like I said, we do previews, reviews and Premier League predictions every week so make sure you stay tuned into that. And if you guys haven't seen it, make sure you check out my last uh, my last review, which was, what is it, Liverpool versus Chelsea. Make sure you check that out as well, and the other reviews as well. So, we're going to get into this bad boy now. Hungary versus England. And now, in all honesty, this should be an easy England win. It's at Hungary's ground. It's at their stadium. I thought it was at Wembley. It's at their stadium. First, we're going to get into the recap. Now, we all remember that horrible moments when England lost on penalties. We all remember that. We all remember when we were so close. We all, Everyone thought it was coming home. I thought it was coming home. I was wearing this exact same shirt and it just didn't happen. I mean, in all honesty, we made a great start against Italy, scoring the first goal from Luke Shaw. I think it was two or three minutes into the game. Everyone's buzzing. Then Italy come back in the second half with Benucci. I think Italy then started to dominate the game more in the second half, if I'm honest with you. I think we were trying to play a tactic of we get the first goal, we just sit back. We were being really defensive and it just didn't work. I felt as though if we were just more attacking and we really took the game towards Italy, we would have won the trophy, would have got the points, but it just didn't happen like that, went to penalties, Southgate trusted uh, his players and unfortunately the goalkeeper was just really good and you know what, you can't blame the manager at the end of the day, it's the first time he's actually got England to a final, right, England won, won a trophy in 1966, now let's deep this right, all the players, for these players right now, remember, your Steven Gerrards, your Paul Gascoigne's, your Gary Lineker's, your, uh, what is it, your Robbie, your Robbie Fowler's, you know, your David Beckham's, your Real Ferdinand's, your Wayne Rooney's, all these amazing players that we had, your Alan Shearer's as well, all those amazing players that we had in that England team did not make it to a final. But these group of players who aren't even half as good or even close to the players that we had back in the 90s, 80s, 70s, 60s, made it to a final. That says everything. And you know, I was proud of them. I didn't care. I was proud of them. I clapped every single one of them off. I was gutted that we lost. But at the end of the day, we made it to a final. And that's an achievement in itself. So that gives me confidence in the World Cup. It gives me confidence for this England team in the World Cup. And I'm confident with this team. So, it's just one of those ones. I'm very, very confident. Also, want to uh, talk about the new players that were actually called out as well. I think there was two players, but in brackets, I've written on a third player that Southgate should have added to the 25-man uh, England squad. In all honesty, uh, so Patrick Bamford gets the call out. He's in the squad. Um, like I said, scores goals for Leeds. I think I think he's all right. In in all honesty, I wouldn't say he's one of the best. Strikers, I think there are better, better English strikers out there. Uh, Patrick Bamford, he's playing all right for Leeds. Leeds aren't doing too bad, I guess. They're not playing that bad in the in the league. But I do feel as though Patrick Bamford does need to work on his positioning and he's finishing a lot. In all honesty, but you know what? He's not a bad player. I think he's, he's only young, and if he can just improve his game, he can turn out to be a world-class striker. It just takes time. Another call out, Jesse Lingard, I think that's well deserved in all honesty. I mean, when he was on loan to West Ham, he was just reborn, scoring loads of goals for West Ham. You know, really, he was he was the man that was on form. And now Manchester United have brought him back. And I feel as though I wish West Ham United actually tried, tried to sign Jesse Lingard or at least make a bid for him. Do you know what I mean? You saw the impact that he made towards West Ham and how far he got them. And remember, West Ham, they're... More like a team that to finish like what in like what the bottom ten. Like they finished in the top ten. 
I think even close to top six, maybe. If I if I check the statistics. So, you know, Jesse Lingard had a real impact on West Ham. And I think that's one of the reasons why Southgate has picked him. Because his form... Nobody, nobody can forget how good he was on loan at West Ham. He was very, very good. He really did coach them. <laughs> don't worry, I ain't got COVID, people. Don't worry. But yeah, you really... Uh, what is it? David Moyes gave Jesse Lingard a new role, gave him more freedom, and then he just picked up from there. So, fair play to him. And the third player that, in my opinion, Southgate should have called up, which is practically beyond me. I don't know how he hasn't called him up or maybe he didn't want to join England or whatever, but he's actually on form for West Ham, and I think that's Mikel Antonio. I mean, he's big, he's strong, he's fast. I mean, if you saw that goal against Crystal Palace that he scored, he literally just held off the defender and just banged it in with his left foot. Like, do you know what I mean? And you didn't really call him up. I think that was, that was a bit stupid. I think that's the type of striker that we kind of need. Because don't get me wrong, Harry Kane scores goals. Harry Kane's undoubtedly one of the best strikers in the Premier League. But... I think having someone like Mikel Antonio, you know, when England needs to switch things up, it can make a huge difference. It can cause, def it makes, you know, the defence have to rethink. I think it gives them another problem, if I'm honest with you, because you got to deal with speed, speed and power. And I don't think defenders want to deal with that, if, if I'm honest with you. Harry Kane's got power, he can hold the defender off, but he's not quick. Whereas with Mikel Antonio, he is quite fast, in my opinion. So I think Southgate should have actually called him up. But it's, it was just one of those things. Alright, I'm going to go into the lineups for the game. Alright, in goal. For my opinion, I think it, it was... I think, in all honesty, we had to pick him. I know it's a game that we should be winning. And maybe we should play some less experienced players. Some players that don't really get regular running. But I just want to make sure that we at least get these three points in the qualifiers. So, in goal, I've picked Jordan Pickford. Like, I don't think there's any doubt... He was brilliant during the Euros. He was brilliant during penalty shootouts as well. Like amazing, the amazing saves that uh, was it he made against Italy. The saves that he made against Denmark. The saves that he made against Ukraine. I think I think it was amazing. Honestly, he was one of the best keepers in the whole tournament. So I'm going for him. Now I've picked a 4-2-3-1 because that's the formation we played in the Euros, and I don't see Southgate even changing it. I don't think he should change it at all. That's just me. Alright, so two centre backs for me have to be Tyrone Mings and Harry Maguire. I left out John Stones simply because I think he's actually injured or he's just sitting out. Tyrone Mings, he needs to get some more experience, if I'm honest. I mean, when he was, he got spun by Callum Wilson at Phillip Park, and luckily Callum Wilson missed it, but he can't be allowing that. So essentially, he just needs to step up a little bit more. I still do have faith in Tyrone Mings. Even though some people do not actually raise him as a as a player, some people just think that he's a, he's a bit easy to get past. But with time comes experience. I think I think in this England squad, it, when he when he's on paired with Harry Maguire, Harry Maguire will kind of guide him. If that makes sense, become a better defender, just like how Virgil Van Dijk guides players like Joel like Joel Matip and Joe Gomez. Like the way he he you know uses his leadership, just tells them what to do, how to position. I think it makes him a better defender. Another example is like Thiago Silva when he came to the Chelsea centre back. How well Zuma played, how well Rudiger played. I think it just increased their level of defending, if I'm honest with you. Made them a completely different player. So, yeah, those would be my two centre backs. Uh, four backs for me. I have to play Reese James at right back, if I'm honest with you. I think he's been on decent form. He got sent off in the game against Liverpool. Was it a handball? Was it not? I don't know. You can check my review. If you, if you guys want to know. Um, yeah, Rhys James is good going forward. He's good tracking back in all honesty. He can cross the ball. Like, he can really like cross the ball. He, he goes forward a lot and covers a lot of ground when it comes to tracking back. So essentially, as a fullback, you need that. And I feel as though he'll have good link-up play with uh, Bakayo Saka as well. And I think their link-up play will be quite good. They've got good communication as well. And I reckon Rhys James will just be able to you know, have that width and hold the line, if that makes sense. Same with Luke Shaw. I mean, he scored in the final, so you pretty much have to play him. I remember before, when he was under Mourinho, people didn't rate Luke Shaw. People thought Luke Shaw was rubbish. He wasn't all that. He wasn't a good player. People thought that he gets left easy. Now, 
he's just a completely different player under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I think you know, he was he wasn't all that under Ole Sol under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer for a while, but then he started to improve, started to play him regularly. His defending was really good. He's got a lot of power. He's got a good amount of pace going forward as well. So he can have, he has good link up play and understanding with Raheem Sterling. So you know you need that, and I think with this fullback with Luke Shaw, I just think he's one of the best fullbacks in the Premier League at this moment in time. And he has a good relationship with Harry Maguire as well. So then they'll know, they'll, Harry Maguire will know when he's going to make the run. Oh, who's going to pass it to? It's just one of those things. It's good chemistry basically. So they, he has to be the left back. Two CDMs. I don't think there's any uh, debate about this. Calvin Phillips and Declan Rice. I think they were outstanding. Really protecting the full-backs in all honesty. Uh, Calvin Phillips played really well. He's got good strength in the midfield. Declan Rice, he's good going forward. Especially for for West Ham as well. He's good going forward. Picking up the ball. His awareness is very good as well. Seeing what's around him. you know, And also breaking up play as well. And I think that's just one of the aspects that we need in this England team. Just to break up the play. And just intercept passes and just anticipate where the ball is going to be. So I feel as though those are the two CDMs that can see that situation, that can see those situations and see those errors and capitalise on the on the errors against Hungary. Hungary. At camp for me, it was either going to be Macy Mount or it was either going to be Grealish. But I chose Jesse Lingard because I feel as though Jesse Lingard can bring something different to the table. I think he'll take defenders on in all honesty. Not saying that Jack Grealish and Mason Mount doesn't, but I feel as though Jesse Lingard will just have more pace in the final third. I feel as though on the counter-attack, he'll be quite deadly as well. He's very agile. Um, his agility is really good as well. And I think it'll just be tougher for uh, the Hungarians, especially in the midfield, to break and stop to Jesse Lingard in all honesty because of the amount of pace that he has. And he's a very, he's a very young man. He's a very young man. So, you know... I think he'll do quite well. I'm, I want to see. I want to see how he plays at Cam. I want to see how he plays at Cam. I want to see if he brings something different. Maybe he'll get a goal. We'll see. We'll see. Three attackers for me. Um, Sterling at left wing. I don't think there's any debate about that. He was the man that scored in, in the in pretty much the opening of the Euros. Uh, he played really well for England in all honesty. So he has to start. Up top for me, Harry Kane. I don't think there's any debate about it. We need goals, oh. and he's the man that's going to score the goals for us. So I pick Harry Kane. Then I right wing. I was going to pick Jaden Sancho, but I have to go with Bukayo Saka. Yes, he hasn't been brilliant on Arsenal, but that's just not him. It's the whole Arsenal team. They've been absolutely rubbish. They've been playing to the best of their ability. But with Bukayo Saka, he brings something different. He takes on players. He's very quick. He's very agile, and I feel as though. He was one of the reasons why we actually scored um, in one of the games. I forgot what team it was, but he's dribbled past a few players and he actually sets up the pass to Raheem Sterling, who sets it up to Harry Kane. So, that's my team, that's my lineup. And that's the end of the video, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys enjoyed it, leave a like. Don't forget to click the subscribe button as well. Leave your um, predicted lineups in the comments down below. I want to know your lineups for the England game. I want to know who you would have put in this England squad as well and I also want to know as well how can I say can England win the World Cup do we have a better chance of winning the World Cup or do we have a better chance of winning the Euros or can this team not do it leave your thoughts in the comments down below I'll see you guys in a bit and peace